So imagine that you're this really beautiful, passionate ENFJ girl and you're sick of dating these, you know, macho poser guys that think they are so amazing. And now you've got your eyes set on this really sweet and sensitive marshmallow of a guy. You're starting to feel it's time to start dating an INFP. But what are some of the dating pitfalls you might expect and how do you get around them? Hi everyone, the name is Eric and this is Young News and today we're talking about the INFP dating pitfalls. But, whoa, wait a minute, I think I just felt something. Yeah, I got a sponsor, I just got a sponsor, yeah. Uh, somebody has sponsored me on Patreon. Uh, somebody named Kate Katora just subscribed to my Patreon channel at patreon.com slash ericdor. And she has a cool new idea for all of you. A new app called Type Match. Type Match is a dating app that allows you to hook up with people based on their MBTI type and their interests. Set to go live end December or beginning January, you're soon going to have a lot of fun exploring the different personality types and discovering your perfect match. Type Match helps you find your ideal match and it has a fun and cool personality test and a unique matching algorithm that will help you find relationships that will offer you growth and challenge in life and in love. Yeah, I got sponsored by Kate Katora to talk about her new app, but I would be happy to talk about this app regardless of whether I would have been sponsored or not. I really believe it's an interesting or cool idea and I can't believe it hasn't been done earlier. Now, with no further ado, let's get back on track with the video. Dating pitfall number one, not picking up the phone. No matter how many times you might call, this guy, this INFP guy, is simply not going to respond. Maybe they don't even have a phone, or Facebook, or any way they can contact, you can contact them. Maybe they locked away their phone somewhere and they forgot where it was. Let's say they do have a phone, most likely they're still not going to look at it more than twice a day, at most. And the thing is, do you never really know. Is it that they just don't want to answer you? Are they ignoring you? Are they mad with you? Or are they simply people that don't like phones? In the end, I think you're simply gonna have to give them the benefit of the doubt here. The good news is, once you do get them on the line, once you do get the chance to meet up with them, INFPs tend to be very attentive listeners and they tend to really do listen when you call them. They tend to really hear you and they tend to listen with nuance to what you say. So you're still going to have a lot of great conversations with them. You just gotta find a way to get them on the line first. Dating pitfall number two. So innocent and so pure. With a lot of people, it's all games and manipulation tactics these days. You know, everyone is so afraid to be vulnerable. But with the INFP, you'll find yourself soon wondering whether they know more than what they let on. Are they really this naive? Did they really not realize you expected more of them? They should have known that you were upset. A lot of time we rely on... Uh, unexpected or subliminal ways to communicate with other people and INFPs are simply not going to listen on this frequency. They're not going to expect you to manipulate them. They're not going to expect you to use them. They're not going to expect of you to have ulterior motives in what you do. So all of a sudden when you do something for them you're going to have to be very very clear. You're going to have to let them know what you expect and what you want from them. And you're going to have to be clear with them. What is it I am trying to say? Am I upset with you or am I not? Am I happy with you or am I not? With an INFP you're going to have to learn to speak clearly. Dating pitfall number three. I love you. Scene 1441. 
INFPs, they're more romantic in their minds than they are in real and practical action. A lot of the time, it's really difficult for an INFP to communicate their feelings about you. Often, they might have strong romantic attachments to a person and they might not say it out loud. You could never suspect it from their behavior. Whenever you talk to them, it's like they think of an excuse to run away. Whenever you're around them, it's like they disappear. Whenever you talk to them, they start daydreaming. Are they listening? Are they even there? A lot of the time it's that they are, they're thinking about you and they're thinking very deeply about you and very intensely about you and in a very romantic way and they have very strong ways of feeling but it happens inside and it takes a long time for the INFP to communicate it with you. So when you tell them you love them they might not say anything back at all or they'll say thank you or they'll say me too, <laughs> that's that. But it will take a while before you really see the depth of how they much they truly care about you. And that takes time. But the good news is it is worth it. Pitfall number four. Loving you versus loving their hobbies. It may be that INFPs are simply so caught up in their creative or artistic pursuits or in their personal writing projects that they're often not going to be home. They might be locked up in their own room or too busy to talk to you. The INFP's inner world is truly important. You won't ever have the INFP's full and complete heart, but you'll have to settle for half of it. INFPs are as devoted to you as they are to their personal crafts, and while they try to balance things 50-50, sometimes you're going to feel like you're left on second place. But that's also what drove you in to begin with. Often they were really interesting because of their craft or unique skills or the unique artistic genius. And without it, they would not be the same. Finally, pitfall number five, planning the future. Planning the future might be very difficult when you're with an INFP. A lot of the time they are simply so impractical when it comes to questions of work and living and where to live and what house and rents and bills and decisions about decoration and about the apartment and about family and kids that it feels that they don't care about it at all. Maybe it's just that they don't care. Maybe it's just that they don't want it. They seem so hesitant, so unsure, so full of doubt that it makes you wonder if they're really serious about the relationship. But a lot of time, of course they are. It's simply that often what they want is hopelessly impractical and impossible. A lot of the time what they want in your relationship together and with your kids and with you as a family is something completely rooted in fantasy and translating that to practical decisions like what to work with is very difficult and takes a long time and hard work. But if you're prepared to work through the misunderstandings, the INFP is also a dreamer whose ideas are going to be highly inspiring and they're going to help you get away from that idea that life is simply about work, is simply about money, is simply about bills, when in reality it's about something bigger and more important and something that is much, much closer to the heart. The INFP personality type is probably going to be the least superficial person you've ever met Nothing about them is going to be surface. Everything about them is just pure raw depth. And if they are prepared to let you in, you're going to be invited to a fascinating and pure and imaginative world and you're never going to want to leave for a reality ever again. So, if you're looking to find an INFP match or perhaps after hearing this, maybe an ENFP is perhaps a better decision, then sign up already for a type match app in the link down below. And happy dating, everyone.